This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to the video tutorial. In this video, I want to share with you guys my opinions and thoughts and review over the new Handycam plugin by Plugin Everything. Now, this video is sponsored by Plugin Everything, but as always, if this plugin sucks, if it's great, I'll let you guys know my full honest opinion, just a full transparency warning here. Um, but you know, you're gonna get a full honest review over this plugin, whether or not it's worth it for you to buy. But basically it is a camera plugin for After Effects that is kind of similar to the multi Multanon camera rig, simple camera rig that you see uh, back in the day. But this is kind of like a, a new updated take on that, that, that script, that camera rig preset. Um, and they talk about it in their video and stuff like that. But basically it's a more improved version of the, um, the sample rig by Multanon. And so basically it allows you to do simple camera movements without having to manually tweak every single individual parameter. It's just easier to use and easier to control your camera. Um, but let's take a look here. So I have this scene right here. This is actually a Stardust um, emitter right here. And I've been meaning to do videos on Stardust for a very, very long time, but the plugin is just too, it's just so advanced and complex and so powerful. That's very, very hard to do a full thorough review and cover everything to a sufficient standard, which is why I haven't really been talking about it. But Stardust is very, 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 very powerful. Definitely more powerful than um, particular FYI, but that's a talk for another day. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete my camera here. And so how this plugin works is basically you a you know you create some kind of um, some layer, some some blank layer. So I'm gonna create a null. Um, and you, you don't even have to name it, but basically you're gonna go to effect, you're gonna go to plug in everything and apply a handy cam plugin. So this is actually a plugin and not uh, you know a script of any sort. Um, so a full fledged plugin from what I know. And so by default, it doesn't really do anything. It just kind of gives you the controllers right here. You need to hit the setup button. And basically it's gonna rename your null. It's going to add a camera and that camera is, um, linked up with expressions and encrypted stuff here. Um, and it's linked to this kind of handy cam controller null right here. And so basically you don't even touch the camera. Um, it's just linked to this controller effect right here. And so right off the bat, you get some pretty simple, you know, obviously useful controls orbit, you know, how many times you orbit around stuff, um, you know, all the time. And this just makes it easier to orbit around a single point particularly this, this null object here. So, you know, you can, you know, do your Z rotation, um, your, your X, you can pretty much play around with it and get some pretty nice movements. And you can also animate, you know, all these parameters. It's a lot easier than using the camera tool, the orbit tool and, you know, cam uh, you know, orbit around, then you gotta like reposition yourself. And it's kind of like a little jank. This is a more controlled, way of doing it and this is great um and so this is the orbit property um under the advanced property you have the algorithm that it, that it uses to kind of calculate like this orbit position here so um by default it's on yxz you can do xyz and it just processes it a little bit differently um, i'm not exactly sure that you know the back end of that but that's pretty much how that works here um but um leaving it to yxz is what kind of makes sense to me right here and um, and so you have these options to look at, which is pretty much the, you know, like keep the camera focused on this object right here. And by default, the target is set to the Handycam controller, which is this null. So it's gonna look at this null right here. So you can pretty much move, or you, you, you can pretty much orbit around it and, you know, um, pretty much move around, but it's always gonna stare at this point in space right here. And you have the ability to, you know, offset that, a little bit here. Um, so there's an option for that. And then you have the track, which is handy. Kind of track in, track out, stuff like that. Um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, position offset, this will position the actual camera itself. Um, so you can shift it. And there's an order in which things are processed. So like things are like the orbit is processed first, um, stuff like that. Um, to kind of keep you aware of what's going on like this. So you can just move around, transition around, and this happens with the orbit. Um, right here. So you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, so lens, I want to focus this kind of section in another composition. 
Um, but for wiggle, we have the ability to pretty much add a kind of camera shake, a wiggle to the whole camera setup. So it looks a little bit more lively. Um, so this is very, very similar to the wiggle expression. So, you know, you can offset it by like, I don't know, 200 frequency of like five and you can kind of see that you can do your whole your whole um, orbiting and position offset and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's going to be kind of like shaking while it's doing it. So, you know, you can still orbit, you can still offset, you can still do all that stuff. And at the same time, on top of that stuff, it's adding the wiggle transformations um, on here. So obviously this is a little bit too much, um, but you know, you get the idea of how you can kind of um, add some camera shake. Now, you know, it isn't, it isn't exactly natural. It is, you know, calculated using an algorithm. Um, so, you know, this might not be as great as using a kind of like a handheld track information data for kind of handheld shake that you see a lot popular now on the internet. Uh, but this will work with the Handycam and um, it can ap apply on top of the, you know, the other position data. Um, so just something to keep in mind. So yeah, you can add some basic camera shakes, stuff like that. Um, and then you have the utility tab here. Um, pretty simple stuff. Um, so for example, this refresh expression is basically to, to refresh and reapply the expressions. Um, so let's say if you went to the camera on accident and you just, you know, deleted depth of field expressions. And now, you know, this is no longer linked up and you're like, well, crap, what do I do? Just go ahead and hit refresh expression. It's going to reapply everything and you won't lose any of your settings because all your settings is applied to the actual controller null object rather than the actual camera. Um, and so now we get to the kind of downside of this whole plugin format. So because this is a plugin and not, you know, a script or whatever, um, you know, if you want to use this in a render farm or you want to transfer this project over to someone else, you know, they're going to need to have the plugin installed. Otherwise, you're going to get like a missing effect issue. Um, but things are not going to render properly and you, and you will have this um, this controller available to them. Um, so let's say you just have this thing and you want to send it off to someone who doesn't have Handycam. Um, you would just bake the expressions. And that will convert all the expressions to keyframes. And so obviously now, you know, these controllers don't work anymore because now you're baking the keyframe in. And so now you have something like this, which you can send off to your, your designer or your coworker, and then they can, you know, have the camera data available to use um, and work with. Uh, but obviously it's not very editable because it's all baked up. Um, so that, that is a, a problem there. Um, and then the duplicate rig, um, basically you can't just select these two and hit control D and now you have a second camera um, set up. Um, it physically works or technically it visually shows that it works, um, but things are not linked up properly. And so what you need to do is you need to uh, select duplicate rig. The plugin itself will go ahead and duplicate. So before I talk about the whole lens features, my overall thoughts on it, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for a store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customized, professionally designed by professionals. You can pretty much customize all the aspects of your site without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the show. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So I have this scene here set up in Element 3D and in the plugin, you have the option to create a null object for the position of certain groups in Element 3D. And so I just created this null link to this position of this reactor right here to kind of represent the position of the reactor. By the way, comrade, if you haven't watched the Chernobyl mini series online, it's really, really great. Fantastic storytelling, fantastic acting. I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, I have this reactor right here, or I call it a reactor. Um, and so I'm gonna use that to kind of show you the features of the look at and focus feature. So basically, um, so basically it's more obvious with the depth of field turned on, but here in the lens option, you have full control over the depth of field and camera information of your camera. So you don't have to go in here and hit UU and you know manipulate all that crap in here and then go into the camera settings and change you know the preset, 35 millimeters, so on and so forth. Um, it's fully customizable within the controller. And so uh, you can enable depth of field, turn it on, turn it off, aperture, I like to crank it way up. 
um, blur amount, focus distance. Um, so right now I'm defining a focus distance and I can just shift that, you know, forward and focus on other things like these front reactors right here. Um, if I want to shift it back, I can. Um, and so now you have a focus layer, so you can choose a layer um, and that's going to define the focal point or the focus distance. Um, and so obviously this doesn't work in Element 3D because Element 3D is using its own 3D space and the Element 3D is not a 3D layer and it's just flat. So, you know, there's not much information from Element 3D. So basically for 3D plugins like Element 3D and, you know, stuff and, you know, the Maxon, the Maxon plugins and Trepco Tau and Form, like those, those 3D space kind of plugins, you're going to need to create a 3D null representing where you want to focus. So in this case for element 3D, I want to focus on this reactor, can't select a reactor by itself. So I'm going to create a null to, to represent that position in 3D space. And I'm going to select my, my center reactor null. And so now the camera, no matter what I'm doing, no matter if I am, you know, um, shifting around and doing some crazy stuff, you know, it's always going to stay focused on this middle reactor here based on the null object. Um, and so that's always nice. So you don't have to finick around with the whole focus offset. Uh, there are expressions to do that in After Effects as a native um, camera and stuff like that. Um, but this just kind of makes it a little bit easier. And of course you can change the offset a little bit. So you can shift it if you wanted to do like a quick little rack, but even though it's kind of still similarly focused in that area. And then you have the dolly zoom. Basically it's kind of like moving physically moving the camera while zooming out at the same time and refocusing at the same time. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty gnarly. Um, so you can play around with that, but basically everything's going to be in frame is what they say. Um, but it's kind of like a warping distortion effect. It's pretty, pretty cool. You can change the focal length of the lens right here in millimeters. Very, very handy. So if I want to use a 35 millimeter or, you know, a hundred millimeter macro lens or whatever, you know, you can change that here. Um, and that updates properly here. Um, and of course you have the amplitude focus. So, um, you know, before we so we started wiggling the camera around, um, amplitude focus will kind of wiggle the focus amount. So if I do like five, just to make it obvious and amplitude focus, I don't know, 300. So you can kind of see the focus is kind of like shifting away a little bit here. So that's always pretty nice. Um, one thing to know about the wiggle also is that, um, the wiggle is not going to be equal in 3D space. Basically, it's going to wiggle more on the frontal plane or the X and Y coordinate, FYI there. Uh, but basically, that's pretty much Handycam and its features. Obviously, you could have just watched the overview video, to be honest. But now I want to give you my kind of thoughts about it. Basically, things work um, as well as they should, you know, like that you have full control over things. You have camera control, depth of field control, lens controls, and, um, you know, wiggle controls. Um, so, but basically, um, some things I want to see in future updates is probably a way to, I don't know how it's possible, but maybe a, a way to duplicate the rig just, you know, by duplicating um, the layers itself. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're aware of that. Uh, the big expression is, you know, an okay workaround. You know, I'm not a fan of the overall workflow and this is not their fault. Um, this is just how, you know, the reality of plugins, right? If you want to use a plugin, you have to have the plugin. Um, and so, you know, I can see this being a problem if you're working in a lot of teams or you're setting off your project different studios and different groups and stuff like that. You know, not everyone wants to buy a camera plug in. They just want to, you know, they a lot of people already have their own, you know, camera rig setups and stuff like that and presets and stuff like that. So um, I think passing around projects with more plugins, especially for something like cameras, might be a problem for certain pipelines and stuff like that. Um, I definitely see it as a, a potential downside. Um, and also baking. Baking, um, like for example, in this case here, baking, this is great. Um, this is a nice workaround. I guess I would want to see a more intelligent baking option. So obviously this is just baking everything into keyframes. But I believe like, you know, on A scripts, there are scripts that pretty much do smart baking by Thomas and Zach Lovett. Basically, it scans through all these keyframes and if it's not needed, it just deletes them. So for example, I didn't really change the blur level or the aperture or the depth of field. So maybe just delete all these for me and delete, you know, duplicated keyframes that are not needed. So, you know, just show me the key points for the bake. So that way the bake is a little bit cleaner in that the, you know, the designer that I pass it to 
the animator that I pass it to can still, you know, visually see what's going on and kind of change things up if they wanted to. Um, just a little workaround. So it's kind of a smart bake feature. Also, I would like to see an auto animate feature. So I believe in the simple camera rig by uh, Multanen, um, there's an option to just kind of, you know, select a speed and things will automatically orbit for you. So obviously I can do a time, you know, a time expression and auto animate this and that and that, and just change the speed and stuff like that through expressions. But I would like to see a feature to where I can just, you know, you know, set a value and the camera will automatically orbit around this point at a certain speed. A quick animate feature um, that's so common, you use it all the time for, you know, mock-ups and, you know, storyboards and stuff like that. So it'd be nice to kind of ha have an auto animate feature I'm um, just kind of getting things quickly set up to see so that client can kind of see what's going on, the general movements and stuff like that. But other than that, you know, I think that this is a fantastic plugin. It works well, other than the downsides that I mentioned. Um, is this worth $30? Uh, and in my opinion, I say that it just depends on what your pipeline is, right? Right. So I know that's kind of a cheap answer, but you know, if you're an individual freelancer and you know, you're you and like two guys, three guys are going to be using this stuff, you know, then it's fine. You know, this is a great, fantastic plugin that will save you a lot of time and I would highly recommend it. But you know, if you, if you pass your project a lot, a lot to a lot of people in your pipeline, you know, that there's going to be a problem. Um, and you already have like a camera rig set up, then this is probably maybe not be the best purchase for you. But yeah, other than that, it's a great little plugin by plugin everything. They're always pushing out fantastic stuff. Um, if you like their stuff, they also create a lot of other cool stuff like Deep Glow and other plugins that will really help you speed up your workflow. So if this is not your cup of tea, check out their stuff um, over at plugin everything. I'll be linking stuff in the video description down below. But this is pretty much Handycam for After Effects, a new camera rig uh, plugin for After Effects. Check it out over at Plugin Everything. Yeah, so let me know your thoughts on everything, whether or not you like this plugin or not, whether or not you would use it or not, um, and some improvements that you would like to see for this plugin as well. So check it out. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo. Subscribe for more videos. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.